Hello students, I am Harinder. I am teaching mathematics to the students for the last 20 years for various competitive exams. Today we are going to discuss a strategy for quant and reasoning area for the TISNET exam. Before we proceed with the questions which have appeared over the previous years, let's discuss the overview as well as the pattern for the exam TISNET. Now, the last year in the TISNET exam, there were 35 questions from the area quant and reasoning. There were five questions from Venn diagram, so it's a very important area. Numerical, word series, odd man out, there were seven questions, permutation combination, time and work, time and distance, had three questions each. There were seven questions from mensuration and geometry, two questions on ratios, three questions on percentage and interest. So overall, you should review these topics in a better manner so that you can deal with the questions on the same in a quite crystal clear manner and in a quicker manner. Now let's proceed with a few of the questions which appeared over the previous years along with I leave some questions so that you can practice those of your own. Now the first question is this one. Now here let's solve this question students. It says no office is a palace and all colleges are palaces. No office is a palace and all colleges are palaces. So that means it clearly states that these two bigger circles will not overlap with each other at all. So the conclusions given are one, all palaces are colleges. You can say it is not necessarily true. No college is an office because O and P, they are two non-intersecting circles. So O and C will never touch each other. So no college is an office is an absolutely clear Conclusion, right conclusion. So answer shall become the second option. Conclusion two follows, right? Moving on, this question, all mountains are rivers. So all mountains are rivers. All rivers are lakes. Now here, naming those, all mountains are rivers and all rivers are lakes. Now you can see that here, M, R and L will be represented in this manner. All mountains are lakes. You can clearly see that. At least some lakes are rivers. You can see because some part of the lakes have been covered by rivers. So you can surely say that some lakes are rivers. So both happen to be true. So your answer shall become choice number four. Both conclusion one and two. Right students, moving on further. There's another silo question which I think you can try of your own and see the answer later. Moving on, this question. Now this is a question on ratio and edges. It's a good question students, let's solve it. Uh, 12 years ago, you can read the question. A and B having a ratio. B's age is given to be this. If the C's present age is 16. Now, C's present age happens to be 16 years. Now 3, 3 by 4 is how much in fraction students? You can see here 4, 3 is the 12 and 12 plus 3 makes it 15. So B is 15 by 4 times C. So you can calculate B is 16 into 15 by 4. That becomes how much? That becomes equal to 60 years. The student six, the age of B happens to be 60 and it's given 12 years ago. So what was the age of B 12 years ago student? So 12 years ago B will be 60 minus 12. That is 48 years old. The ratio of A and B was 3 is to 4. So if B is 48 and A and B share a ratio of 3 is to 4. So what can you say students? If 4 happens to be 48, how much will 3 be? Now 3 will be equivalent to 36. But mind it, this 36 is the age of A 12 years ago. Not to forget this. Right? So the question talks about the present age. Now what is the age present age? It will be 36 plus 12. That becomes equal to 
48 years. So this 48 becomes your answer. Right. Next question, students. This question is complex. If you solve it by the traditional approach, but if you apply the approach I'm going to tell you, you can really solve it in a better manner. See, he says 15 more could be purchased if the price was cheaper by 10 rupees. So this means whatever number was purchased, you could have purchased 15 more if the price was 10 less. So this means the number purchased plus 15, they both should be a multiple of 216 students because you're talking about capsules and it cannot be in fraction at all, right? Now, if you see the first option six and you add 15 in this, you get the number 21. So can you see that is 21 a multiple of 216? 21 is clear, six more, no, it is not a multiple. 14, and if you add 15 in this, you get 29, it's a prime number, not divisible, not dividing 216, goes off. 8 plus 15 is 23, again, it is not a factor, gets rejected, so you can mark the fourth option as the answer. One approach. Two, you may not be sure and you want to check it. Let's do that for you. If 12 was the number bought originally, can you say 12 plus 15, 27 was the number purchased later? No, 216 was the amount spent students. If 12 items were purchased, what is the price? You divide it, 12 ones are 12 and eight. The price was 18 rupees initially. And now, if you divide 216 by 27, what do you get students? 27 into 8 gives you 216. Now, what is the reduction in price? The reduction in price happens to be 10 rupees. And this is what the question was saying exactly. Price is cheaper by 10 rupees. Right students? So this becomes your answer. Right. Moving on to the next question. Yeah, this question is based on allegation and mixture. A person sells 16 rupees. He buys it and he sells at the rate of rupees 15. Still, he makes a profit of 25%. So let's first calculate the cost price. You selling something for rupees 15. And there is a profit of 25%. So cost price will be 15 divided by 1.25 that is equal to 12 rupees. So this means 12 rupees per unit happens to be his cost whereas pure milk is costing rupees 16. Now he has added water in it. So just apply allegation students. I hope you have learned the concept of allegation. Now here Pure milk is costing rupees 16, water is costing rupees 0, and the average cost happens to be 12 rupees. So taking the differences, students, you get here 4, sorry, uh, here you get the difference as 12 rupees, and here you get the difference as 4 rupees. Now what is the ratio of 12 and 4 students? You can see this ratio happens to be 3 is to 1. So the first option becomes your answer, which gives it as 3 is to 1. Right? Moving on to the next question. This one, there's a profit and loss question. Uh, my dear students, you can apply a trick here to make it simple. Half at a profit of 12%. Anything you want to do, half. So what can you say? Let the number of items be 2 or 2x. So if there are two item students. One, you sell at a profit of 12 percent so what shall become your total profit from this it will be 12. so because it was half so other item is still to be sold we don't know how much profit at and finally what is the result the result is on two items sold you get a profit of 18 percent on an average so students what has to come as a number here it is plus 36. So balance it out. 36 minus 12. Can you say you have to get a positive 20 from, from here? 24. And there is one item. So 24 divided by 1. What has to come here, students? It has to be 24 here. Right? So answer is first option, 24 
percent. Right? Let's move on, students. In this question, the ratio of A and B is given to be 3 is to 2. So we can take the numbers as 3x and 2x. Uh, then it says 6 times the square of B. So it is 6 into 2x square minus 3x whole square is equal to 540. So if you solve it students, you get here 2 2 is the 4, 6 is the 24 minus 9. That is 15x square to be equal to 540 which gives you x squared to be equal to 36. From that you can find x to be equal to 5, x to be equal to sorry 6. So f is 6, you can find the value of b as 2x that is 12. Right students? Moving on to the next question. Students, it says length is 6 more than the breadth. So you can take it breadth is b so length is b plus 6. Now twice of that is given to be equal to 84. So you subtract that and you get 2b to be equal to 36. It gives us b to be equal to 18. If b happens to be 18, b plus 6, l becomes equal to 24 students. Now it says uh, whose base is equal to the diagonal of the rectangle. Now we have to make the diagonal of this rectangle. Now here the Pythagorean triplet of 3, 4, 5 will be of a great use. You know this is 18, this is 24, so this will become 30. So 30 will be the diagonal here and height is equal to the length. So area of a triangle is half into base which is 30 and length is equal to 24. You solve this students and get the answer as 12 into 30 is how much? 360. So this becomes your answer. Moving on to the next question, this one. It's a simple question students. 56 workers did a piece of work in 14 days. So 56 into 14 is equal to, if the work is to be completed in 8 days, what has to be the number of minus students extra workers? Let's write workers. So how much workers? You solve it, 8 7s are 56 and 14 7s are 98. So total number of workers happens to be 98 out of which 56 are already there. So how many additional workers are required? It is 98 minus 56, that is 42. Let's move on to the next question, students. It's a simple time, speed and distance question. 210 meter long, you know the distance traveled will be the same in six seconds. So if 210 is covered in six seconds, what comes out to be the relative speed? It is 35 meters per second. You know how to convert it into kilometer per hour? Multiply it by 18 by 5. And you get 18 sevens are as 126 kilometers per hour. Now students, it is given that the man who is running at 9 km per hour in the direction opposite. In case of opposite direction, the speeds are added. But this is the added result of 126. So in order to find the speed of the train only, we need to subtract 9 from this to generate the answer as 117. Now let's come to the last question. This one. It's a number series question, students. Uh, 37, then the term is missing, 103, 169. Now, as the second term is missing, you can start the question from the third term. The difference here happens to be 103 and 169, that is 66. 
Then 57 plus 31, it is 88. 257367, it is 110. Do, can you recall something? 66, 88, 110. Every time an increase of 22. So can you say here, here it will be the difference of 44. Here will be the difference of 22. So add 22 in 37. 37 plus 22 gives you how much? 59. So this 59 becomes your answer students and you can check further that if 59 is placed over here plus 44 gives you 103. So this becomes absolutely right. Right students? So these were the 12 questions followed by the answers for the 8 questions and 4 more questions. I hope you all would have learned and attempt this section in a better manner in the testnet exam. So as this was a video on reasoning and quant, you can watch the other videos as well on uh, verbal ability section as well as on the general section. Thank you so much students. Happy learning.